My name is Jonathan Winters, and I've got a secret. I've got a secret brought to you tonight by... Tap Oven Cleaner Spray, the fast, safe, nice way to keep your oven clean. Get hip to tap. Now, here is I've Got a Secret, starring Gary Moore. Thank you so much. Good evening. Welcome to what we think is going to be a most exciting edition of I've Got a Secret. I would like you to meet the members of our panel. First, standing in or sitting in for vacationing Bill Cullen as the star of his own show, Play Your Hunch, Mr. Merv Griffin. Merv, very nice to have you with us. Indeed Thank it is. Nice and then there is Betsy Palmer. Good evening. And Henry Morgan. And Bess Meyerson. And now let's all applaud together. Panel, if you're all quite ready, with a gasp, I introduce our first contestant. Will you enter, please? <laughs> now, uh, will you tell our panel, please, what your name is and where you're from? Evelyn Curry, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Evelyn Curry of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, as you may have guessed from her costume, Evelyn Curry is currently appearing with the Ringling Brothers Barnum & Bailey Circus at Madison Square Garden. Now, Miss Curry, if you'll whisper your secret to me, we'll show it at the same time to our audience at home. <laughs> no, wait, 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 wait. Tell, tell me more. Tell me more. Oh. Here we go. How <laughs> to help you classify Miss Curry's secret? The clue concerns something she is going to do, and Henry Morgan will start with the game with you, please. Miss Curry, are you an aerialist? No. Do you uh, do what you do alone? Yes. Do you use any equipment? Yes. Is it um, a mechanical thing that moves you? No. You move it? Yes. Is it a heavy weight? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> are you a weightlifter? No. <laughs> Do you lift something live, like an elephant? No. Like, like a what? Elephant. Lift no? Wild question. Uh, $20 down, $60 to go. We go, please, to Bess Myers. Well, but has Henry touched uh, on the right area? Do you deal with animals rather than mechanical devices? Yes. yes? Um, do you ride an elephant? No. Are you, you couldn't be. I just, a lion tamer? Yes. You are? Yes. And you're going to do something tonight? Yes. Oh, I know. Does what it, it is. involve? <laughs> I know. A lot of Henry has to. All right, we've lost forty dollars, forty to go. We go to an entranced-looking Merv Griffin. Do you know? Oh, him? I do. Well, tell me before I question. No. <laughs> uh, you you do uh, with a, a group of lions or one lion? Oh. Well, in the yes. circus, she works with a great group of lions and tigers. But here, she's working with one lion. Is this something that nobody's ever done in the circus? Or do you do something very unusual with this lion? Yes. You do an act together, in other words? Yes. Do you... You don't twist together, because that's very fun. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, in her act, she does, but that's not what she's going to do tonight. In her act, you... Oh, you do twist. Yes. With a... $60 down and $20 to go. We I go, please, to Betsy. I think I know only because last week, Gary Moore and I had a conversation up in the makeup room. And he said, I just had... I turned down doing the spot. He said, I was at the circus today, and they tried to get me to put my head in the lion's mouth. And he said, I'm not going to do that. Are you going to do that tonight? Me going to do it? Yes. She going to do that. My me going to do it. That goes to show you, I should have kept my big mouth shut. See, I thought the spot would be off the show, but now they've got Miss Curry doing it. She is just marvelous. If you go over to the circus, and I urge that you do, she is the only lion tamer, male or female, who works without using whips or guns or chairs. Her act is particularly unique because she works so very close to her animals. And tonight, as we said, she's going to show you how close she can get by, go by putting her head into the lion's mouth. Now, is this something that you do every day in your act at the circus? I've never done this before. What? Uh, I've been practicing it, and this will be my first public viewing. 
Uh, I don't mind telling you that I'm a little apprehensive. It doesn't seem to bother her. Have you, have you practiced with a real lion? <laughs> yes, this is her baby. Let's, let's meet her baby right now. Oh, Tell me. Nice. Bonnie is the lion's name. Sure we do. Now, the lion at the moment is in the, in the cage there. Yeah, how about that? Uh, let's get this shut nice and tight from the outside. All right, now, may we ask... We're, we're not fooling. She is quite, quite new at this, and so is the lion, so let's be all terribly quiet. The lion weighs 500 pounds, is four years old. Miss Curry just now came from the circus where there was a fight in the cage among some of her lions. So you know you have teeth. Yes, he does have teeth. Look at the size of those teeth, will you? Now, here comes, here comes the tricky part, and understandably, I don't think she's going to keep that head in there very long. You realize the great strength of this beast. See, he's never done this. This particular lion has never done this before. So she has to kind of coax him into it. Bonnie, Bonnie boy. Bonnie boy. That's close enough. That's close enough right there. That's close enough, Evelyn, really. Chickened out. It's the first yes, time in I'm ten so years when I've got a secret that I chickened out on a stunt, but this one I ain't going to. We'll be back with you again after this important massage. <laughs> Having so said, may we then greet our next contestant. Will you come in, sir, please? Evening. Let's see. It. Let's see. It. Will you tell our panel, please, what your name is, sir, and where you're from? My name is Tennis Anderson from Pine Place, New York. This is Mr. Tornus Anderson of Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Mr. Anderson is the captain of a fishing boat for the Carlson Fisheries in Point Pleasant. All right, Captain Anderson, if you will whisper your secret to me, we'll show it at the same time to our audience at home. <laughs> Not only clue to Captain Anderson's secret concerns something that happened to him while he was fishing, and Merv Griffin will start with you, my friend. Uh, Captain Anderson. It's Captain Anderson, is it? Yes. Captain Anderson. This is something that happened to you while you're fishing. Is it something that you caught, sir, that nobody yeah. had ever quite seen before? Is it a certain species of, of fish? Was this a fish that no. you caught, sir? No. No? Is it, uh, is it you caught something other than what you usually catch yeah. at work? Yeah. You found something that maybe was floating in the water? Well, let's didn't. put it this way. It was something that was floating in the water, and he didn't expect to catch it. Isn't that accurate? I said. Was there... $20 down, $60 to go, and Betsy, you're on, please. Something that we would ordinarily find in the water, though, Captain Anderson. No. Well, I think, sir, we have to say that this is where this particular thing is found. It would be strange to find it out of the water. Was it something that had belonged to you, Captain Anderson, before? No, no. In your life? Was it something that belonged um, to uh, the animal world at all? Was this thing that you caught in the animal world, sir? Uh, no. Does it have something to do with um, machinery instead of... Um... Yeah, I think so. He'd see it. I mean, I said say you uh, find it... Forty dollars down, forty dollars to go. We go, please, to uh, Henry Morgan. Well, is, 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 I didn't hear how that came out. Was it machinery? Uh, that there is machinery involved in the thing which he unexpectedly caught in his net. You catch an automobile? <laughs> uh, <caught> the airplanes. <laughs> he said, "No, he has caught an airplane in his time." But uh, uh -huh. did you? Uh, oh, one thing. Did you, were, you, were you using a hook? 
You were fishing with nets, were you? Oh, yeah, yeah. A dragger net. Oh, you could come up with anything that way. Uh... A mermaid. Yeah. <laughs> it was an animal. Was it... Is it... Was it... <laughs> was it of uh, much value? Is this a valuable thing you caught, sir? Yeah, I guess. Kind of and you say it's usually in the water? Yes. Uh... <laughs> All right, we've lost sixty dollars. We have twenty dollars to go, Bess. That's what I have. Yeah, try that. Was it uh, was it a vehicle of any kind? A vehicle of any? You have to say in the broad sense that it was a vehicle. Oh well, then that outlaws sunken treasure. No, well, no, it could have been another boat. Another boat. Some other kind of boat. Did you catch another boat, sir? Yes. Did we have to say yes, wouldn't we? Yeah. Oh, a very. <laughs> well, a submarine. Everybody. Absolutely right. Thank you. <laughs> hey, got it. Usually, Captain Anderson and his crew of four catch fluke, lobster, butterfish, and so forth in their nets. But a few years ago, they hit the jackpot panel. Captain Anderson's secret, secret is his net caught the atomic submarine Nautilus. In his net. <laughs> now, I say that he caught the submarine. It would be more like to say the sub caught his net. For you, for you folks who don't know about draggers, that their huge net weighs about 1,000 pounds, weights on the bottom, and drags along the bottom and picks up pretty much anything that's down there. But all of a sudden, his boat and stopped going forward, started going backward. Now, this is a 70, 60 to 70 ton trawler that he was operating, and like a giant hand had hold, hold of it, the stern of his boat started to go underwater. Oh, Fortunately, at this time, the net broke, and he was released. But he didn't... What did you think you had caught there, sir? Uh, I don't know what to think. You thought it was a certain... Uh, you thought it was a whale, perhaps? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure he was there. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, well, anyhow, he didn't know what it was. Two days later, the Nautilus steams into, uh, into New London, its home port. And when it comes up, there is Captain Anderson's net draped all around the conning tower. <laughs> and that's how they found out about it. But the captain had better luck last Saturday. He just got back in from a fishing trip, and he brought the presents for each of the members of our panel. Only one of them do we have here. Will you show the panel what you brought them as a present, Captain Anderson? Yeah. He's got one for each of you. Oh, The ten-pound lobster, the other three we're keeping on ice, we'll see to it that you get them or that they're delivered to your home in case you're going out this evening and don't want to be seen in company with a ten-pound lobster. <laughs> Captain Anderson, thank you very, very much, sir, and better luck next time. <laughs> now, we will meet our special guest tonight in just a moment, but first, here's a message of interest for you. Now then, to introduce our very special guest for the evening, if you have any remaining slightest doubt that he is one of the, not one of the funniest men you have ever encountered, may we suggest that you get this album called Here's Jonathan. That's the one that I have at home. And now there's a new one coming out. It's called Another Day, Another World. There is only one, Jonathan Winters. Oh, oh. Right, okay. Pretty impressive, yeah, yeah, right. friend. You're not going to go back into the Marines, or are you? Well, I'm not thinking of it right now. This moment, Gary, uh, I did my trek, to tell you the truth. And uh, as a matter of fact, these are all recruiting sergeants from the Marines. Yes. And we've come to get you. <laughs> uh, you. You don't need me. You look great out here giving those commands. Well, you know, it's a lot of fun, Gary. It takes a little audacity, a little self-determination. Got a little skull work there, you know. 
know the movements and uh, the commands, and be a uh, rather, you know, good-looking guy. That's all. Really yeah, yes, I, I understand. It takes that. You, it sounds to me like you're describing the members of our panel. Well, as a matter of fact, you're right. I thought it might be kind of fun to bring them in on this, and uh, if you'll just sort of forward the good news to them, I'll fill the boys in. All right, well, now, just a moment. First of all, let me tell you what you're going to have to do, uh, uh, Betsy, and all of you here, is you will start, you'll be working from over there. But you'll take two men who will, Johnny will assign to you, and you are to, by direct military, strictly military order, orders, you are to march them over so that one is standing under each of these marine recruiting signs. But you, if they are not strict military orders, they cannot obey them. Now, before we start that, Johnny, if you'll just address the troops. Fine, Gary, thank you very much. Right. All right, men. Good. Well, gang, it's been a lot of fun, hasn't it? We had 16 months of this jazz, living on stale shark and drinking salt water. Out there in the boondocks every night, up to here in swamps and alligators and toads. <laughs> now you either shape up or you ship out. I don't want to... Wipe that expression off your face. Get rid of it. Coming to me with your problems about sweethearts and wives, chuck them. This is the moment we've all been looking forward to. We've trained for this, lived on the ground, eaten our 782 equipment. That's hard, you know, that's metal. <laughs> we've had a lot of fun, though. We're going to have a lot more fun. I'd hope to be able to go with you on this little deal. <laughs> but they need me in the wings. Any questions, men? That's what I'd like to hear. <laughs> Nothing. There's not a doubt in your mind of what we're going to do. Now, these show folk are going to put you through a few turns. We've trained for this. Let's don't goof. We don't want 12 hard years at hard labor in Portsmouth, do we? <laughs> okay, gang? You like the car, don't you, Mac? <laughs> right. Okay, boys. Good luck to you. You look great. Best I can do with them. <laughs> <laughs> Betsy Palmer, come up here. Yeah. Here's C Colonel Palmer. Yeah. Now, he will point out the two men who are called file number one. You address them as file number one. File? Yes, he'll tell you which two they are and what you do. All right. I've never been in the court. You haven't? Any of them, no. Oh. How do you make them go on angle? Really kind of simple. Uh, this right, uh, this is the file right over here. We're going to start yes. with this group right over here. All right? Mm -hmm. All you want right. to scramble the boys and gentlemen up oh, a little bit yes. before he starts? Right. Just to make it tougher. All right. Stand by. File one. Come on. Hey! Two. All right. Hey! Three. Come on. Hey! There. Hey! Okay. <laughs> Which ones do I take? You'll take this uh, one here. Hole one. No. <laughs> easy. <laughs> easy American, honey. <laughs> right face. I want them this way. Le uh, left face. <laughs> About face. About face. About there. Very good. Right, uh, that was... Nobody knew any better than that. 
Hello, John. Hey there, Henry. How are you? We were in the Spanish American together. Once. Oh, oh, it's terrible, I know. They still using the same command? Oh, yeah. Which uh, file are you in? That's the file right here. There's me. Oh, I said two. Second file. Left. Face. The way. Half. Not half step. <laughs> and hold. Right. Face. Forward, hurt. Half right, hurt. Uh, hold, hold. They don't know half right, huh? <laughs> right, face. Two steps forward, hurt. Right, face. <laughs> There you are, Bess. Oh, you, you, you got your guys started backwards. Good luck. Yeah, Johnny, if, you know, if you're going to depend on the distaff side of our panel, we're going to lose the next war. We just have to. It's not funny. Uh, now, hi. Hey, where, where are we going? Well, Which one are mine? It's the third file here. They're gorgeous. Um, hey, fellas. <laughs> fellas. Um, about faith. That's beautiful. <laughs> Forward march. <laughs> halt! I said it before you did. <laughs> because if you'd listened to me, they would have been over there already. Um, how do you tell them to take one back step? Power at them. Take a back step. Huh. Uh... <laughs> Now... Apparently the one likes you more than the other. I know. <laughs> and the other one likes you more than he likes me. <laughs> Some days you're lucky. Uh, you up... <laughs> How do I just get one of them now? Come to Paris Island for a week. <laughs> <laughs> sir, uh, would the first Marine... He's non-commissioned, you can call him, sir. Sergeant. Uh, one step back. Take. <laughs> <laughs> Left. Gorgeous. That's, that sounds like an army training up at Grossinger's. One step back, take. <laughs> All right, now, Merv, we're going to make it tougher on you because you've had three chances. I mean, you've had a chance to watch them three times. You do the same thing, although at no time are you allowed to say halt. It has to be one continuous flowing action. And you're up next, Merv. Oh, how they stop. Well, well, you, well, well, you get them, you say halt when you get them in line, but not before that. It's a tactical problem. <laughs> Maybe we can march them over the other network. You, yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, boy. Attention! Oh, they already are. <laughs> hey, he's got brown shoes, eh? They all have. Oh. Ready? Mark time! One, two, three. Mark time, boys. Mark time. One, two. Mark time is definitely a military. I tell him to march. Oh. Ready? That way you get two at the same thing. <laughs> Good. Ready? Forward, march. Backward, march. Forward, left face, turn, right. Rear march, rear march, rear march. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Left flank, halt, left flank. Left oblique, oblique, boys. OB. Halt! Halt! Oh, I can't stop them. They stop, though. All right. That's all the time we have, Merv. That was just marvelous. Thank you very much. They were out in the lion's cage. <laughs> Johnny, how on heaven's name are you going to get these gentlemen off of here? Well, I have a new order, and I want to say, if uh, General Shoup is looking in, uh, this is my order. Believe me, it's a little something that you wouldn't find in the everyday Red Book, which is the Marine's Bible. So, uh... I'll take the full. If it's your order, I guarantee you won't find it. All right, let's see you march these gentlemen off now. All right, gentlemen, you people, <coughs> shape up. Walk interspersantly. Hush! Hush! You there. All right, get to know each other. 
Wait a minute there. Uh, right flank. Uh, individually uh, gather here. Uh, I was your friend, girl. Uh, to the rear. Uh, fall in. Oh, and this notes of confusion. We do hope to see you sure. next week. We'll probably all be in Marine Guardhouse. We'll see you. When the clock strikes 12, enter a strange realm of dark secrets and heroic triumphs. He just won a million dollars! Where fortune hunters of today You're driving me crazy. live side by side with creatures from another time. Late nights on GSN, Monday through Friday when the clock strikes 12. Was it something that had belonged to you, Captain Anderson, before no, no, no. in your life? Didn't belong Was it to something me. that belonged um, to uh, the animal world at all? Was this thing that you caught in the animal world, sir? Uh, no. Does it have something to do with um, machinery instead of... Um, yeah, I think so. He'd see it. I mean, did you find that... Forty dollars down, forty dollars to go. We go, please, to uh, Henry Morgan. Well, is, 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 I didn't hear how that came out. Was it machinery? Uh, that there is machinery involved in the thing which he unexpectedly caught in his net. You catch an automobile? <laughs> uh, he caught the airplanes. <laughs> he said, "No, he has caught an airplane in his time." But uh, uh -huh. did you? Uh, oh, one thing. Did you, were you, are you using a hook? You were fishing with nets, were you? Oh, yeah, yeah, a yeah. dragger net. Oh, you could come up with anything that way. Uh... A mermaid. Yeah. It was an animal. Was it, is it, was it... Was it of uh, much value? Is this a valuable thing you caught, sir? Yeah, I guess. Kind of and you say it's usually in the water? Yes. Uh, All right, we've lost $60. We have $20 to go, Bess. That's what I have. Yeah, try that. Was it, uh, was it a vehicle of any kind? A vehicle of any... We have to say in the broad sense that it was a vehicle. Oh, well, then that outlaws sunken treasure. No, well, no, it could have been another boat. Another boat. Some other kind of boat? Did you catch another boat, sir? Yes? I think we'd have to say yes, wouldn't we? Yeah. Oh, a very... <laughs> well, a submarine? Everybody. Absolutely right. Thank you. <laughs> hey, guys. Usually, Captain Anderson and his crew of four catch fluke, lobster, butterfish, and so forth in their nets. But a few years ago, they hit the jackpot panel. Captain Anderson's secret, secret is his net caught the atomic submarine Nautilus in his net. My name is Jonathan Winters, and I've got a secret. I've got a secret brought to you tonight by Tap Oven Cleaner Spray, the fast, safe, nice way to keep your oven clean. Get hip to Tap. Now, here is I've Got a Secret, starring Gary Moore. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to what we think is going to be a most exciting edition of I've Got a Secret. I would like you to meet the members of our panel. First, standing in or sitting in for vacationing Bill Cullen as the star of his own show, Play Your Hunch, Mr. Merv Griffin. Merv, very nice to have you with us. Indeed Thank it is. Nice and then there is Betsy Palmer. Good evening. And Henry Morgan. And Bess Meyerson. And now let's all applaud together. Panel, if you're all quite ready, with a gasp, I introduce our first contestant. Will you enter, please? <laughs> now, uh, will you tell our panel, please, what your name is and where you're from? Evelyn Curry, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Evelyn Curry of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, as you may have guessed from her costume, Evelyn Curry is currently appearing with the Ringling Brothers Barnum & Bailey Circus at Madison Square Garden. Now, Miss Curry, if you'll whisper your secret to me, we'll show it at the same time to our audience at home. Oh, wait, 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 
wait, wait, wait. Tell, tell me more. Tell me more. Here we go. Harold will help you classify Miss Curry's secret. The clue concerns something she is going to do, and Henry Morgan will start with the game with you, please. Miss Curry, are you an aerialist? No. Do you uh, do what you do a lot? And I urge that you do. She is the only lion tamer, male or female, who works without using whips or guns or chairs. Her act is particularly unique because she works so very close to her animals. And tonight, as we said, she's going to show you how close she can get by, go, by putting her head into the lion's mouth. Now, is this something that you do every day in your act at the circus? I've never done this before. What? Uh, I've been practicing it, and this will be my first public viewing. Uh, I don't mind telling you that I am a little apprehensive. It doesn't seem to bother her. Have you, have you practiced with a real lion? <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is her baby. Let's, let's meet her baby right now. Oh, Tell me. Bonnie is the lion's name. Here we go. Now, the lion at the moment is in the, in the cage there. Ben, how about that? Uh, let's get this shut nice and tight from the outside. All right, now, may we ask... We're, we're not fooling. She is quite, quite new at this, and so is the lion, so let's be all terribly quiet. The lion weighs 500 pounds, is four years old. Miss Curry just now came from the circus where there was a fight in the cage among some of her lions. So you know you have teeth. She does have teeth. Look at the size of those teeth, will you? Now, here comes, here comes the tricky part, and understandably, I don't think she's going to keep that head in there very long. I realize the great strength of this beast. See, he's never done this. This particular lion has never done this before. So she has to kind of coax him into it. Bonnie, Bonnie boy. Bonnie boy. That's close enough. That's close enough right there. That's close enough, Evelyn, really. Yes. Do you use any equipment? Yes. Is it um, a mechanical thing that moves you? No. You move it? Yes. Is it a heavy weight? Yes. <laughs> Are you a weightlifter? No. Do you lift something live like an elephant? No. A what? Elephant. Lift no. Wild question. Twenty dollars down, sixty dollars to go. We go, please, to Bess Myers. Well, but has Henry touched uh, on the right area? Do you deal with animals rather than mechanical devices? Yes. yes? Um, do you ride an elephant? No. Are you? You couldn't be. I just a lion tamer. Yes. You are. Yes. And you're going to do something tonight. Yes. Oh, I know. Does it is. involve? <laughs> I know. A lot of Henry things, has right? to. All right, we've lost forty dollars, forty to go. We go to an entranced-looking Merv Griffin. Do you know? Oh, I do. Well, tell me before I question. You. <laughs> no. uh, you you do uh, with a, a group of lions or one lion? Oh. Well, in the yes. circus, she works with a great group of lions and tigers, but here she's working with one lion. Is this something that nobody's ever done in the circus? Or do you do something very unusual with this lion? Yes. You do an act together, in other words. Yes. Do you... You don't twist together, because that's very fun. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, in her act, she does, but that's not what she's going to do tonight. In her act, you... Oh, you do twist. Yes. With a... $60 down and $20 to go. We I go, please, to Betsy. think I know only because last week, Gary Moore and I had a conversation up in the makeup room. And he said, I just had... I turned down doing the spot. He said, I was at the circus today, and they tried to get me to put my head in the lion's mouth. And he said, I'm not going to do that. Are you going to do that tonight? Me going to do it? Yes. She going to do that. Not me going, going to do it. Echo, 
goes to show you, I should have kept my big mouth shut. See, I thought the spot would be off the show, but now they've got Miss Curry doing it. She is just marvelous. If you go over to the circle. Morning. Morning. Come on. Morning. 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 I chickened out first yes, time in I'm ten so years, sorry. and I've got a secret that I chickened out on a stunt, but this one I ain't going <laughs> We'll be back with you again after this important massage. <laughs> Having so said, may we then greet our next contestant. Will you come in, sir, please? Good evening. Let's see it. Let's see it. Will you tell our panel, please, what your name is, sir, and where you're from? My name is Tennis Anderson from Pine Place, New York. This is Mr. Tornus Anderson of Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Mr. Anderson is the captain of a fishing boat for the Carlson Fisheries in Point Pleasant. All right, Captain Anderson, if you will whisper your secret to me, we'll show it at the same time to our audience at home. <laughs> My only clue to Captain Anderson's secret concerns something that happened to him while he was fishing and Merv Griffin, we'll start with you, my friend. Uh, Captain Anderson. It's Captain Anderson, is it? Yes. Captain Anderson. This is something that happened to you while you're fishing. Is it something that you caught, sir, that nobody yeah. had ever quite seen before? Is it a certain species of, of fish? Was this a fish that no. you caught, sir? No. No? Is it, you caught something other than what you usually catch yeah. at work? Yeah. You found something that maybe was floating in the water? Well, let's didn't. put it this way. It was something that was floating in the water, and he didn't expect to catch it. Isn't that accurate? I see. Was there... $20 down, $60 to go, and Betsy, you're on, please. Something that we would ordinarily find in the water, though, Captain Anderson. No. Well, I think, sir, we have to say that this is where this particular thing is found. It would be strange to find it out of the water. 